rocks measure the natural radioactivity in the rock. So if there are natural radioactive contents within the rock samples, then the gamma ray lobby machine can detect. Then produce SGR or what's called spectral gamma ray logs for the core. These logs, I mean SGR, provide information about the relative concentration of the radioactive elements, including potassium, uranium, and thorium. One of the well-known tasks for core gamma ray logging is to identify and differentiate lithology, such as sandstone from shale or limestone from shale, and also to identify some clay minerals, and also to characterize significant amounts of potassium feldspar and mica. However, core gamma ray logging instrument is like all industry machines, subjected to industry standard measures, as well as certain calibration to be set before logging process. So it's not unlikely to produce errors in the log due to different reasons such as miscalibration, problem in software setting, or problem in core laying or organization before running. So as a geologist or a true scientist, you are so keen to make sure that the measured gamma ray log is up to the standard and the quality required to be used for reservoir studies. So to avoid mistakes or errors that may show up accidentally or unintentionally in the SGR log, do the following. Step number one, discuss instrument calibration. The instrument should be calibrated against pure samples of potassium, uranium, and thorium of known activities and concentrations contained in tubes like this. Calibrations are sensitive to the size of core, the gamma ray energy range, and the magnitude of, radia of background radiation. The, uh, the calibration is important step to be done before logging initiation to make sure that the instrument is working properly before running the core logging. Next step is core to log comparison. After logging, ask for a spectral gamma ray plot to be printed from the instrument and compare the output core gamma log with the spectral gamma ray from composite log that you must bring along with you to the core lab. The comparison enables you to identify the differences and changes, the magnitude of changes of values of each parameter and detect if some errors are there. In addition to, in addition to that, you will be doing a depth shift. Core gamma ray log is displayed or plotted in downhole log format at scale of typically 1 to 200 to allow direct comparison. Step number three is core sample organization. In case some errors occurred, for example, when you note that there's an upside down core gamma ray behavior in some intervals of the core, like we see here, in the interval from 520 to 540, there is a, a difference in the reflection between core gamma ray, core gamma, spectral gamma, core gamma ray, and uh, wireline uh, gamma ray. We can see that at the, this reflection for core gamma ray must be here and this reflection must be here since they are similar so this means that in, in such cases we say that we have a turnover or a, uh, 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 or the, 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 co the core gamma ray is uh, uh, locked upside, da upside down which means that there is a problem with the organization of the core sample in, in this interval so in this case, we ask the technician to check the organization of the core sample associated with the error if they were laid properly from bottom to top before logging. The two parallel lines that we see, the black and the, the black and the red, are the criteria. For example, if the two lines direction is different in some parts of the of the core where the misleading behavior occurred then the core sample is turned over and inconsistent with overall direction of the whole course. So, as we can see here, if we follow from the, from the, first, from the first core on the, on the right, the black line, we, we laid the cores from the bottom to top, we can, the, we can see that the black line should be on the right and the red line should be on the left, but here, we can see the, at this interval starting from 525 or uh, uh, at this interval things start changing we see that the red line now is on the uh, right not the black line so this means that there is a 
uh, uh, turnover this means that the uh, core samples were not laid properly from top to bottom and that's why we see the turnover behavior for core gamma ray log another issue may occur with core gamma log behavior at intervals of broken samples core log may behave strangely or differently at broken or damaged core samples intervals we can see here that the core gamma behave uh, is different let's let's say it behave differently in terms of uh, values and the trend and the intensity of damage ranges from totally broken core like the ones we see here and in this case it's not possible uh, of course to provide consistent information when uh, logged to partially a broken core w which is generally associated with core handling at well site or at the lab or sometimes uh, due to natural fracturing however the broken pieces must be refit together if possible before core gamma ray logging to restore core to its original status as we see here step number four is core logging operation you can discuss with the technician the logging operation conducted if it fits your company requirements in terms of logging speed core order and spacing and core breaks for logging speed typical scan speed is around 0.5 feet per minute for cores inside the liners or tubes while for exposed core typical scan speed is 1 feet per minute for core order cores should be laid out from bottom to top before running gamma ray scanning to avoid issues of log turnover we spoke about earlier in addition to that spacing technician must mind the covers of the core tubes that we see here in this picture these cause space between the core intervals when placed on the instrument platform so they should be considered during logging to avoid false data or extra spaces in the output log and lastly core breaks core breaks must be fitted together so that the core can be restored to to the original status as we see here in this cartoon number five do core log depth match exercise core gamma ray log is a valuable data and it's the best way to do core log depth matching the objective from core well log depth matching exercise is to set the cores samples at the true depth in the reservoir modeling the core samples must be set at the true depth before doing phases and property modeling when it comes to depth matching there are two things to be considered first is that core gamma ray log will have a different character or different behavior from the wireline gamma ray log and this is attributed to energy difference and vertical resolution as always core gamma ray has a higher vertical resolution compared to wireline gamma ray now let's move now to the next phase of core preparation process which is plugging geoscience skills thank you for keeping learning